guys. Welcome back to a, another episode here on the Disc Golf channel. If y'all are new to the channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Make sure that you guys do subscribe. I try and post my rounds and other videos a couple times a week if possible. Obviously, it is the winter season. It rains a lot, all that kind of stuff, but I'm trying to keep that content flowing for you guys. If y'all have been enjoying it, obviously, let me know down below. But I've got a list here, okay, and we're going to have some clips and all this kind of stuff in this video for you guys of five things that I think will help you be a better disc golfer, okay? Um, now, obviously, these are things that help me, and I would say that a lot of them would help other people as well. If you guys have your own specific list of things that you think can help other people get better at the game of disc golf, off, um, the sport of disc golf, um, just comment that down below. Okay. So number one, number one, number one, you're going to hear this your entire life when it comes to anything. Okay. And that is practice, right? Who guessed it? Practice is number one. Now here's the thing about practice, especially for people like me. Sometimes practice can be boring, right? Like I'll go out and play around and intentionally be trying to practice something and I'll get frustrated and I'll just be like, you know, what? I'm just going to finish this round. So no, I'm not going to continue practicing. I'm just going to keep going. Uh, it's very easy when you're practicing to get bored of what you're doing because you're being challenged when you practice um, and you just don't want to do it because you get bored, you get tired, but it's so necessary. And here's one of the reasons that it is extremely necessary. And that's because you need your shots and your throws to feel uh, second nature. They need to just feel natural. You shouldn't feel awkward when you're doing them physically or anything like that. It should feel like you've done it before. It's just a routine. That's one of the biggest things about practicing, in my opinion, um, is that it helps you get a routine. So whether that's practicing putting and you get your motion, get your motion, get your motion. You'll watch all these pros putt. You'll watch all these people that are really, really good. They have a routine and a lot of that comes from practicing. They get comfortable at it. They force themselves to do that routine because then when you do that routine, you feel good, you feel natural, everything is great. So number one, obviously, practice, 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 practice. Um, and obviously practice can look a little bit different. Practice can be going out and playing around with just a putter. Um, it can be going out and playing around just sidearm. Uh, it could be doing like what I did where you throw two shots, you have a, you take a bogey on every hole of you, or you take a, a mulligan on every hole of you, or you throw two shots, you throw from the good one, you throw from the bad one. You can still have fun while doing it, but it is necessary to go out and practice in lots of different situations. Number two um, has kind of three different things, okay? That's form slash commitment slash finishing. They all kind of work together. Um, form is something that is very, very important. There's a lot of videos out there on form where pros will break down form and all of that kind of stuff. Um, it's very important to know uh, good form and to know how to throw specific things, obviously just so that your body is all working in one fluid motion, one line. Everybody knows about dragging the disc across your chest, finishing lots of videos on that. Um, but the biggest thing that I want to talk about is commitment and finishing. Okay. Um, commitment obviously goes along with uh, committing to a shot. Okay. So that means that mentally you're like, I'm going to make this, but I'm going to commit to this. I'm not afraid of this. I'm not going to lay it up short. Um, sometimes when you're afraid, you throw too far to you and you hit the band or whatever you commit to it. You're confident, you're ready to go. You commit to the shot. Um, and committing also means going back to what you practice. So if you have a motion, if you have a motion that you're used to when it comes to putting or throwing, you do that. You do that motion even if you're 10 feet away, even if you're 30 feet away. You have your motion, you do it, you commit to it. You'll see all of the pros do it. When they're 30 feet away, they do the exact same putt when they're 10 feet away. Now, obviously, they can drop it in, whatever. It's a little bit different. But if you watch them, it's committing to a shot. And a lot of times, that means that you might look weird. That means that you might fall over. Um, that means that whatever you see you see people putt from the woods they commit to it so much that they fall on their chest and then they end up making the shot so committing to the shot and that also goes with following through and finishing which is the other word when you um, throw your drive or your sidearm whatever it may be you can't just throw and right when the disc is out of your hand stop moving your arm because even though the disc is out of your hand that still affects the flight of it um, it's a weird thing because when you commit to it and you finish 
or you finish and you go through, you turn your body, you let that back leg kick out when you do a backhand, whatever it may be. Finishing is so unbelievably important. You might feel like you look weird when you're putting and you're fully extended with your arm out and you kick your back leg back. You might think that you look weird, whatever. That doesn't matter because you're going to make the putt and the people that are worried about looking, looking weird aren't going to be shooting as good as you. Okay, so commitment and finishing is so unbelievably important when it comes to the game of disc golf. You got to commit to your shots. Um, and again, that just means like, that means going for it. Okay, you're not laying up, especially with your putts. You got to go for it. You got to hit it right in the middle of those chains. You got to get it there with a little bit of force. So otherwise you're going to end up short. That's what I always do. I can't tell you the number of times that I hit the freaking basket whenever I'm putting. And that's because mentally I'm not committing to the shot and physically I'm not committing to the shot really extending my arms um, and all of that kind of stuff. So you have to make sure that you commit. Um, that's very, very big. Next, I would say playing outside of your comfort zone. Okay. And that kind of goes along with practicing. Um, because obviously if you're in a match, you don't really want to play, or if you're in a tournament, you don't really want to play outside your comfort zone, but playing outside of your comfort zone, um, really, really challenges you. Okay. And so that kind of goes along with, uh, a lot of people are just backhand players playing out of your comfort zone will be throwing sidearm and going out and practicing it. Um, so this one kind of playing out of your comfort zone kind of goes with uh, the whole practicing thing, but obviously practice is just kind of an overarching thing. Um, and so throwing outside of your comfort zone is important because you can figure out those sidearm shots. I used to surprisingly enough, I used to just be a sidearm player when I started playing I did not know how to backhand the disc like accurately. I could throw it, but I did not feel comfortable with it. I would sidearm Anheuser's, I would sidearm Heiser's, I would do everything. I was a baseball player, so I got used to it, and that was all that I did. And as I started playing more, I was like, I want to get better at this, and so I'm going to challenge myself. And so I started throwing backhand, and now I throw backhand more than I throw sidearm. I still have my sidearm in the bag if I need it but I'm so much more comfortable, um, confident. I just mixed comfortable and confident into comfortable or comfortable. So that's what we are, okay, we're comfortable. Uh, and, and I would go out and I would practice that and I would do something that was out of my comfort zone. It didn't feel right. Um, but a lot of times when it comes to form and all that kind of stuff, it's not gonna feel right because you've been doing the wrong thing for so long. And so, Obviously, if you're just a sidearm player, that isn't wrong. You got to play to your strengths. And I'll talk about that in just a second as well. But it's very, very important um, to play outside your comfort zone sometimes. Go out, throw the shots that you normally wouldn't throw, especially if you're going to be playing a tournament. Know your throw and know how your throw can go wrong. Um, so if I'm throwing sidearm on a hole, I'll look and say, there's a chance I might hit this tree, which means I'm going to end up over here in these bushes if it hits and ricochets this way. So I need to practice a couple shots from here. This is outside my comfort zone. I don't want to throw from here, but I might end up here. And then when you get to that place or a similar place on a different hole, you're going to feel way more comfortable. Uh, I almost did it again. <laughs> way more confident okay so you got to go out you got to play outside your comfort zone sometimes to really challenge yourself and become a more well-rounded player um next mental state is huge i've seen so many people and this even affected me the other day in my last video when i searched for that disc for 45 freaking minutes like my mental state was done i was like mm -mm, not doing this I don't want to be here anymore. And that can very easily happen in tournaments as well. I've seen so many people who are really, really good players get one bad break and then get another bad break on the next hole. And then they're just done. They're just shot mentally. They're not confident in anything. And obviously mental state is a challenging one. It's, it's hard to overcome that. Um, but you literally have to play each hole at a time. Um, you can't allow the last hole to come in and affect the way that you're performing um, in a negative way. Obviously, if you're keeping track and you're on that lead car, you're being chased or whatever, and you know that other people are close to you. If you had a bad hole, you know that you have to perform on the other ones, but you can't let it get you down. You can't let it um, lose confidence in yourself, therefore not playing anymore. If you, if you have a bad putt, you can't go up to the next one and overcorrect 
and then miss your putt, you need to go up and putt how you're confident. You just messed up on the other one. You don't need to overcorrect from your past mistakes. You just need to know what you, you just need to do what you know how to do. And if you have a certain putting form, whatever it may be, you need to get there. You need to go after it. You need to get that putt that you know how to do. And you can't let your past mistakes affect the rest of your game because. I'm telling you, man, just as quickly as you can go south by getting bogeys, you can have a streak of six birdies in a row and be right back to where you were, and then that momentum is even going to be just as, as good and impactful as a negative one. So mental state is huge in these things. You got to just have fun because I tell you what, man, the, the more fun you're having, the more um, just confident you are in yourself, the more, I don't want to say goofing off, but still stay serious, but have fun while you're doing it. You know, laugh, allow your mind to be a little bit distracted at times because if you're mentally focused for too long, you're going to be exhausted. I forgot who said it, but I heard them say, I focus for, what was it? It was like, I focus for um, two minutes every game. Um, and it was on like the putts or something. And the rest of the time, they're just having fun looking at the trees. Like what you can't always be thinking about everything you're going to be doing. Otherwise, you're going to be exhausted. You're not going to be able to make it through a tournament. Some people might disagree with that, but I think it's really important to be loose and to have conversations on the course um, and to look at your surroundings, all that kind of stuff. And then when you need to throw, throw the throw that you know how to throw, which goes into my number five, which is play the shot you know. This is very, very important when it comes to playing in tournaments or playing in rounds that you actually want to count where you're not like out practicing. Throw the shot that you know you can throw. Um, if there's a 15% chance that you'll make one shot and it'll get you a birdie, but there's an 80% chance that you'll make another shot and you have a look at birdie, but you're most likely to end up with par, take that other shot, especially if you're in a situation where you really need the security of that then you got to throw the shot that you know how to throw i've talked about this in a lot of my videos where i'll throw my judge down to a hole i'll park it i'll park it i'll park it and then i'll throw like an emac truth or i'll throw a compass and it won't end up in the same spot and i'm like why am i even throwing this disc like why am i even throwing this disc when the judge has filled that spot in my bag i'm parking it i'm getting birdies almost every time I'm throwing this disc why am i throwing another disc when it's not necessary but obviously, if you're getting pars on certain things or whatever it may be, then you can bring in those other discs and start practicing. But if you're in a situation where your sidearm is going to be more effective than a turnover putter, don't throw the turnover putter just because it looks pretty. Like, turnover putters look good. You know what I mean? Whenever I uh, watch people throw their turnover putters, they're absolutely amazing. I love watching it. But sometimes you just got to throw your sidearm and skip it up to the basket instead of just letting it flutter down beautifully with that putter. So you got to play the shot that you know and that you're confident with and that you've done before. And then when you go out and practice, that's when you're going to challenge yourself. That's when you're going to do the things that you're not comfortable with. But when you're in those rounds, you need to throw the shots that you're comfortable with. Don't try too much crazy stuff. Sometimes it'll pay off, but it can also bite you in the butt. Throw how you're comfortable because being comfortable and being confident in the game is so unbelievably important when it comes to doing well, et cetera, et cetera. Um, those are my five points uh, that I think have affected me the most that have really helped out. Um, comment yours down below if you think that there's anything that I missed. I would love to know. Thank you so much for watching. You guys are the absolute best. I'll see y'all in uh, the next video, all right? Take care, guys.